Don't need a crew. Look at this. Two-person crew right here. That's all we need. Get this whole thing done with just me and you, man. All right. So we're firing Dave? Yeah, we're going to fire Dave. All right. We don't need him. Coming to you pre from the control room at LA Mission College Studios in Los Angeles, California. This is the Best Coast Show. I'm your host, Albert Aguilera. That's my producer, Curtis Stage. Curtis, we're having a session. Emergency show. Yeah, it's a show between the shows. This is episode 85.1. Point, is there going to be a point two? I hope not. There might be a point two <laughs> if we continue with this World Series topic. But we're talking about the World Series today. We are going to go to Game 6 on Tuesday. Yasiel Puy guaranteed a Game 7 for Wednesday night. He did. He did. He said this isn't going to be over in six. We're going seven. That's what he said. We're going seven games. I, I believe him. I believe because him. you called in our last show I said a game seven six. game. Well, I thought whichever game was on Halloween, that was the one we're going to win. That's game six. Okay. Well, okay. We're going to win that. Okay. So we're going to go to game seven. Now, Dodger <laughs> fans that okay, are attending for, game six. First of all, in the last game, I said I thought I might die before this series is over. And now, really, I may. I am closer to. You got Gray? I had a lot of anxiety last night. You got grayer? Grayer. Game five was a lot of anxiety. It was. I mean, insane. All right. It was, it was upsetting. <laughs> Guys, but game six is in Los Angeles. It's why we wanted home field. Game six, game seven, we'll be here at Dodger Stadium. And ticket prices, you don't have an excuse not to go to game six. Ticket prices have literally been cut in half. They, they were have. selling for 11, 12, 1300. Now I've seen them between four and 600. That's not cheap, but it's way less expensive. No excuse not to go. No excuse not to go. No and excuse not to go. And so, and it's it, Halloween, so I expect all the fans to be dressed up. As what? Fernando? Anything. <laughs> You're all dressed in... Okay. Um, oh, 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 oh. What? what if... I just thought about this. What if all fans showed up in some kind of Japanese attire to support you and Ooh. boo uh, Guriel, and we all show up as like samurais or something? That would be awesome. Would with that be swords? racist? With swords? I don't think they'd let you bring no swords. in swords. No swords. But do you think day. people would think that's racist? Well, not if we were samurais and, and it was... No, I think that's support. That's like support. That. Yeah, that's support. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's like, it's like yeah. gay of the okay, dead. Okay, guys. Things. So you show up as, as samurais and what you have to do is you have to help intimidate Guriel. Do you have a samurai outfit? I do. You do? I actually do. <laughs> okay, I do not. Oh. I don't you can know. rent one. I could. Okay, yeah. Oh, wait. Another one real quick. I just found out about this last year. Excuse my ignorance. But don't bring any flags or paraphernalia no, of the no Japanese flags. rising sun because apparently that's not okay anymore. That's not okay. Yeah. Or was ever. I don't know. Well, that's like our, it's like our Dixie flag. Correct. It's like the Confederate flag. Correct. So, you so don't, stay away from the uh, rising sun flag, guys. I know we want to support both of our— But do it, do it in a non-racist way. Well, let's talk a little bit about this Guriel thing. Let's talk about that. It's total garbage. That total garbage. He did what he did. Okay, you, that, you, you the, Darvish, you Darvish was above everything and was like, listen, fans, it's okay. We're going to learn from this. Let's make love, not war. And he said that's going to prevail. Okay. Ultimately, it he prevailed did, for he did, him. He did go above. It prevailed for Dodger fans. It did not prevail for the garbage humans of Houston. Why? Because, first of all, Manfred should have suspended Gurriel. Yes. I'm not saying get rid of him for the whole series. I'm saying two games, one at least one game in Houston where it has to happen immediately because what you're telling them is like, listen, bro, we're not going to put up with that crap, especially yes. not in 2017 in the United States where everyone's getting hit with everything because the internet's so PC and people get offended for other people. Now I'm Could not going to make the case for that he didn't know because he's not American. That he did, and that's dumb. He said, I don't, I didn't realize that I did it. Now. Hispanic people listening to me watching this right now, you'll, you'll sign with what I'm about to say. White people, give me a second and I'll explain. So in the Spanish culture, when you add the ito to anything, like chicharito, chinito, huerito, yes. whatever, yes. it's a term of endearment. So when you say chinito— Chicharito is little bean. Correct. Yeah. So when you say something like chinito, but, you know, I happen to be friends with Curtis. Curtis happens to be Asian of some kind. I'm not. But, but he's yeah. not. And in this case, you Darvish being Japanese, you say El Chinito and you're like buddy-buddy with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the my problem— Exactly. My, my the little... problem is that doing the derogatory eye gesture while saying that is mm -hmm. what makes it wrong. Yes. It's pretty— 
I think it's pretty clear to everybody that that was derogatory. Exactly. Now, now here's making what I, the excuse wait, except, of wait, I didn't know. Wait, it was clear to everybody except for some Houston fans. Because right. Because they were in the stands. What happened? Okay, so if you guys saw the game, Guriel should have been suspended, but he, instead he came up, hit a three-run home run after another Japanese pitcher that is on our roster, Kenta Maeda. Yes. And the Japanese, I'm sorry, the... Full Japanese, by the way. He's full Yudarvish Japanese. Because is Iranian and J- Japanese. Correct. The Houston Astro fans behind the dugout towards the third base side were taunting Maeda with the eye gesture. Not and it's acceptable. Like, Not acceptable. Manfred, what are you doing? See, what he did, he's condoning the behavior because he's saying it's okay. We'll, we'll punish you next year yeah. for five games. Yeah. Because your, your value in the World Series, what you did, it should just be a punishment, but not for... This not for your team for this World Series, but that's BS. Right. So here's what I'm thinking, right? So you go up there and you have Morrow who throws 100 miles an hour, throw one into the side of his helmet. Morrow's right. going to get ejected. Exactly. But, he's going to miss a game. But hey, he's going to miss a game. How's that fair he's to the other 24 some, guys? He's going to get some money he, taken out get, of his wallet. Exactly. Yeah. But apparently being racist is acceptable because it's the World Series and we need you to be here. Completely BS. Here's the deal. I was, you know, look, my son who played Little League and Pony, if anybody on his team did a gesture like that, not not saying Chinito, but if they did the any eye kind gesture, of derogatory, any derogatory to anybody, not only would they be, not only would they be suspended, they'd be off the team. They'd kick like, them out of the league. They'd be out of the league if they did something like that. They'd be gone. They're just not acceptable. So uh, that's in little league and pony league. Now that okay, but so the difference you, is that is there are fifteen point six million people in the United States watching your son play. And the tens of millions around the what world, including is, Asia. What I'm saying is there's a harsher penalty in Little ex- League than it is exactly. in Major Leagues. Now, the Dodgers... And we're not asking for Gurriel to get kicked out of the league. That's not it. No, no. He's probably a nice guy. I mean, to be honest, it was probably... You know, like, you can't not know that this is a problem. Right. But he's probably not a bad dude. He's probably not... He played know. in Japan. What? You didn't know that? No. He played in Japan. Well, that maybe explains his stupid haircut. Can we say that he has a stupid-ass haircut? He looks like Sideshow Bob. He looks like Sideshow Bob. He looks Bob. like a pineapple. Does he know that his hair looks that? Maybe it's slick normally. And when he has the helmet on, it's not slick. Maybe. But it, okay. there's no excuse for that haircut. It's really dumb. <laughs> yeah, no excuse for that haircut. Um, but, but the thing about it is, is, that, is that this punishment in Major League Baseball for next season is not severe for what he did. Is it's not it severe. It doesn't mean anything next season. It doesn't mean anything. Who cares? The first five games of the season, it's just like, oh, extended spring training. It, exactly. It means nothing. It means zero things. And it's, it's like... When he comes into game six at Dodger Stadium, oh my God. Dodger fans, li- listen, <laughs> we gave Baez so much shit. And Baez plays for us, and I'm one of those air quote fake fans that booed him because yeah. I will boo Baez. I will boo any of my players if hey. they're not performing. So you guys better go out there and boo the living hell out of Gurriel. Do not let up on this man. Yeah. Anytime he does anything, he goes to you base. boo him. Yeah, because he's feeling he was at home in the comfort of home, and no one was. Booing. They were cheering him. Yeah, that and that's probably the worst thing that the fans in Houston, when um, according to multiple uh, reporters that were on the Twitter, and when he was announced in pregame celebrations, yeah. that he got the loudest ovation and oh people stood God. up to clap for him. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's just. I mean. That's not okay. I, mean, I don't care you if you're a organi- homer. You have an organization like the Dodgers, right? Where the Dodgers historically are known to be the franchise that broke color barriers, that has a huge influence in Asia because, yeah, I mean, we brought yes. in Hideo Nomo, right? Yes. We brought in the wave. Chan Ho Park. Uh, uh, Chan Ho Park. We yeah. brought in the wave of, of Asian players into the United States. Sure. We, you know, like uh, Jackie Robinson helped break the color barrier. And being in Los Angeles— we also were We're late to have a black manager, and Al Campanis had some racial comments, by right. the way, which he lost his job for. Right. And that was no worse than what this dude did. No, not at all. <laughs> and being in Los Angeles, you guys are in Los Angeles, most of you watching and listening to us right now. Being in Los Angeles, I grew up with white and black and Asian and yeah. various Hispanics and, and Christian diversity. and Muslim and Jewish friends. It's called like, diversity. I grew up in Los Angeles. We're a massive melting pot. Yeah. Right? So it's like... Houston is too, though, dude. Houston is the third biggest city in the nation. It's a melting pot. I and mean, I'm sure it is. So that's why people in Houston should be upset about it, too. Where it's kind of like... if Okay, listen. If I'm, if I'm a Mexican Dodger fan, and I have one player on my team who is not Hispanic, a white, a white guy, okay. says we something derogatory towards a Hispanic player, specifically Mexican, of another team, you mean like, I, yeah. I would be like, really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't know John Rocker was on the team. Yeah. Like, this guy, like, John Rocker got 
he his life was altered, by the way, John Rocker. Right. For, for, you can't for, go do an interview and say, how do these people get into this country? Speak English. Yeah. It's just insane. Now, all right, let's you, switch gears. So, okay. All right. I mean, let's switch gears because we could talk, we could talk been, about this all day. That's been talked about for a long time in Dodger fans. We're more but, concerned. But give him hell. Give him absolute hell. Give him absolute hell. We got to give him hell. We got to give him hell. So, Off camera, Curtis suggested you throw batteries at him because no, apparently no. people used to do it to Daryl Strawberry. Well, people used to, yeah. The Giants fan, well, I was just kind of making a comparison because in Old Candlestick, Giants fan used to throw batteries at Dodgers players. Battery. And they weren't being, re- this was just, I hate the Dodgers. Terrible. I'm throwing batteries. Terrible. And they were called the battery truckers. You don't know this nickname N- for the Giants? N- never heard that. They were called garbage, the battery truckers. Garbage Giants franchise. Fan. Giants fans, battery truckers. That Gar- was their nickname. Garbage franchise. So, yeah, garbage. Totally. So well, let's talk about games uh, five, yes. four and five. Well, let, should we start with Kershaw? I'm. It, uh, it's getting increasingly difficult for me to defend playoff Kershaw because after game one, the narrative was like, "Oh, he went he's seven back. through. It was awesome." And he's and he's and he's won. How many of his last decisions in the playoffs? I think uh, the Dodgers were eight and one going into this game. So he's so he's turned it around. No, it's not that he hasn't turned it around. He just he is who he is, and he plays how he plays. It just so happens that. The guy's getting paid $30 million a year is universally known as the greatest pitcher of this era. Yeah. Goes four innings. But Keiko could not go four innings either. Which and he's kind pretty of pissed damn me good off in about Joe Buck because everyone always says, oh, he's biased against my guys. He's biased against my team. Yeah. But here's what got me with Joe Buck, right? Because I don't, I don't believe in that. He said Kershaw got knocked out. And, and Keiko uh, was tired. No, couldn't got, find the strike zone. Uh, Keiko got worn down or wore himself down. Yeah. While Kershaw got knocked out of the game. Yeah. That doesn't... And it's kind of like, uh... Wait a minute. Eh. <laughs> and, you know, after the game, Clayton Kershaw acknowledged what you Darvish first brought up and what Berlander has talked about, what slick. both pitching coaches have talked about, that the balls are different. They're slick. That they're slick. Now, Kershaw said, listen, that was on me because their pitchers are pitching with the same balls. Can't we scuff up the... Well, their pitchers aren't friggin' pitching very good. Well, either. their pitchers aren't pitching very good. And this this is, the, like Yasiel Puig said, a baby stadium. Yeah. And this whole scuff... This whole slick ball helps Houston... Because it takes away our strength. Our strength was our bullpen who was, like, untouchable. And all of a sudden, they give up nine runs in two games. Yeah. So it's like, okay, your bullpen was already garbage. So it made them more garbage. Yes. And your bats are just as good as our bats. Maybe yours are a little better because you're yeah. in the American League, yeah. so your, your team is built that way. So I think it gives them the slight advantage in Houston, which it did. Ultimately, we lose 13-12. to 12. Insane. Okay. 13 to 12. Let, okay, so let's talk a, about game five on a bigger scale. That was the weirdest, craziest game I've ever... I've been watching baseball since I was a kid. I Little still blame kids. it on Dave Roberts. Okay, whatever. But that was the weirdest game where at, at first when decisions were being made, and we'll talk about some of them, I was like, okay, Roberts is making some bad decisions. We can all... But the thing is, is, is by the end, it didn't even matter what decisions oh, anybody no, because was making. It was basically, okay, last run scores. This was like a softball game. Yeah. I think I think Taylor on Dodgers Reddit was like, this is no longer a baseball game, this is a softball game. It's right. completely like we're in a beer league right now. I mean, it literally well, is like and, our softball games for the best. And a lot of people were like, you, we acknowledge that it was a crazy game, but a lot of people are like, this is the greatest game I've ever seen. And it's like, listen, you, no, obviously, that was the worst game. you obviously don't watch baseball because this is an atrocity but it was because fun to watch. It was fun, I, to, it was fun watch, to watch, but listen, there shouldn't be 25 runs in a game. Even with <laughs> shitty pitching, there should not be 25 runs in the game. How many home runs were there? Like, like oh, 58? Like seven or eight. <laughs> it was like eight. They broke the record for the home runs in a World Series game. Yes. We have now the record for, in a series, home runs. We've, and that the game playoff, was the second longest game. The in, playoff record for home runs is 100. I believe we're currently sitting at 99. No, no, no. We, got to, we tied it. Oh, we tied that it. Tweeg's home run tied Oh, that, you're right, you're right. Yeah. So this this series is doing. I mean, look, maybe it's making some baseball fans out of of a casual. Like if this is what Chicks base dig the long ball. But, but remember, what, baseball was dying after the the lockout, and what brought America back to baseball? Steroids. Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire juicing like yeah. race horses. And now what's and bringing them back? Exactly, is slick balls with tighter seams. Right, and that's what's bringing them back. Is that was it unwatchable for because I couldn't leave the room. Okay, I mean, I, it wasn't unwatchable. It, it, was it was not unwatchable. It was more like seriously. This is not a real seriously. Baseball game. What the hell's going on? You don't have any idea how many times I had to do this. Like, it just and just walk. Away. Oh, I oh I didn't and, even and, sit and, down and just walk away. You I have no pacing. idea how many times I had to stand up and just go. You know what? I'm done and uh, walk away. Yeah, my son. We have like so we're very superstitious in the stage family, and. 
you know, you got to wear the same clothes. You got to wear this, and I'm sure many of you Dodger fans out there are. I've this been wearing way. the same hat, glasses, and blazer since the playoffs started. Well, you, oh, you have different glasses. That's right. So my son, I have like six pairs. We of got glasses. to the point where anytime Houston scored, my son was in. So anytime the Dodgers scored, my son was out of the room. He went to the bathroom, and somebody hit a home run. And he's like, "What happened?" I'm like, "You're home moving run. into the bathroom." And then, and no, and then, and then he came back in, and then Houston scored, and then he went out to go get a drink in the kitchen, and the Dodgers scored, and he's like. I go, dude, how can you come back? He's 15. At you, that point, I move him out. I no, say, he listen. Was. He was. Listen, he was you out. move out. He spent, the, he spent the final four innings in his room with the door open, hearing the game from his room. That's awesome. And, and, and me telling him what was going on. And I said, dude, you can come out here. Come in, come, seriously, watch the game with your and dad. And then the Dodgers lost. I go, no, he didn't come out. I, I go, come on, come out here and watch the game. It was the final inning. And we came back, and then we came back with Taylor's right. hit up the middle. And I'm like, you got to come back out here. This game, it's tied now. It's 12 12. This is insane. He's like, nope, I'm not coming out. I'm staying in here. That's what, that's what Dodger fans are doing right now. That's right. how crazy. Well, that doesn't happen in normal baseball. No, games. listen. All right. The bulk of the Los Angeles audience is Mexican, and you're all Catholic. Here's what I need you to do. Oh, very superstitious. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to go get one of the Ginger Jesus candles that I had the other day, yeah. and I need you to light one of them. Oh, you had that? Yeah. So he, yeah, I, I got the, the Gatorade picture of him getting dumped in the Gatorade, Yes. and I wrapped it around a candle, and I lit it, and that was my Ginger Jesus candle. Okay. And We're not selling I'm those not, on the site. I'm, no, we're we should, website, but we're not we doing that. We can't. Um, we can't granted, take don't, be, don't take them to an actual church, because the no. priest might say something to you. Yes. But feel free to like hide it amongst the other candles that your Mexican mom has. <laughs> See how long it takes her to notice. How long do you... If I replace a picture of actual Jesus with ginger Jesus, how long before you think my mom notices? I, I think I would give her probably a day because I think your mom's pretty savvy on the red hair part. That's probably true. She's probably, I mean, the beard and the long hair, at first glance, maybe not. But she'll come back to it and go, wait, what's up with this? Wait, how's it But that's going? what He's, they should do. We should yeah. totally just light candles. <laughs> He's, um, okay, so Kershaw, you don't have, is it that you don't have faith in Kershaw now? Because I'm starting... Mike, I'm now questioning Kenley Jansen now. I think it's psychological with Clayton Kershaw, 100%, because he was cruising. He was. And it's not until he gets into a little bit of trouble that it turns into a, a snowball effect. Well, look, Kenley hit, um, he hit, you know, he hits uh, McCann, right? Did he hit McCann? Yeah, he hit McCann. He hits McCann, and I'm like, okay, that's it. Right when he hit him, for no reason whatsoever— I'm like, he never hits anybody. You guys know this. You've been watching Kenley all season for four. He does not hit people. He has so much control on that on his cutter. Well, then and his that goes back to the balls being slippery. I, we've all said this. Everyone has said this. Yeah. Kenley Jensen's sp- uh, cutter isn't cutting. It's not cutting. All of a sudden, it's, right it's not cutting. And you Darvish said it, said it again. I think it was this morning on Twitter. He goes, I don't understand why the balls were the same all year long for the regular season, for the divisional series, and, and the LCS. And all of a sudden, so we for the, the World ra- Series, so the ratings need to all go of up. a sudden, for the World Series, you change the balls. Interesting. And Houston's, because uh, Verlander came out. And said it too because you know you get smashed in game three. And that's not like him. And one, it's not like him. And two, people would be like, "Oh well, dude, you just got wrecked. Of course you're going to make excuses." What about Alex Wood though? He had a so no hitter going through five and a third, right? Five and two thirds. Correct. So I don't, I don't get it. And that was probably why because a lot of people were saying that, "Oh, Alex doesn't look like he has it." And I'm like, "He's got a no hitter going through five. Yeah, How does he, he look like he had it. Have it? He had it." And um, you know, weird. then Justin Verlander came out and said the exact same thing. And Justin Verlander says, "Yeah." The ball is obviously different, and I noticed it when I was signing autographs. It feels like the re- the, the shiny part of a receipt from Starbucks. Oh, shit. And then Houston's uh, bullpen coach, his pitching coach, I don't know his name, but he goes, yeah, I did a quote-unquote blind study where he grabbed a regular one, and they gave him a World Series one. He goes, I was able to identify which was That's which. That's not good. That's not you good. You shouldn't be able to identify the ball. But I don't, I mean. But that. But we can't blame a loss on the ball. Right, because it, it went both ways. Both pitchers on both teams threw it. And then the garbage, garbage, garbage umpire, which yeah. was awful in both directions. I'm not going to say he was hurting the Dodgers or he was hurting the Astros because his strike zone was garbage for both teams. It was, it was. So we, and we can't, so we can't blame it on that. So what we are saying now is both teams have a bunch of rubber arm dudes. Right. We, they both, everybody's. It's like we're at a softball game. In Houston, at least, it was at, like being at a Baby softball stadium. game. Uh, for, for at least one game, there was some good pitching there. Um, well, two ga- I mean, one game, there was, you know, it wasn't until the ninth inning until Jock hits right. that home run. So, I mean, this last game was, was maybe it was the balls were just a little bit slicker, but it's unlike Keuchel and Kershaw to look like that. So I know fans are freaking out going, I can never trust Kershaw again. I don't think that he's got it. I, 
I still am not there yet with that. I think it's I psychological. Th- it's a snowball effect because he'll cruise until he's not cruising. Well, that's every pitcher. No, no, no. Every pitcher, you'll see them either get ex- blown up immediately, like Brandon Morrow, who throws one pitch and gets destroyed. Okay. Or you'll see them gradually get worse as the game progresses. Kershaw will give up the hit, and then he's like, ah, oh, crap. Now and then it just gets worse and worse and worse, like within the same inning. And you're kind of like, dude, did what? you and the rest of the Dodger pitchers forget how to give up singles? Exactly. Because it seems like the only well, thing you guys can give up are home runs right now. But that's now. all Houston does is hit home runs. That's what they do. Because they play in a baby so stadium. So here's what's going to happen. When they come back to Dodger Stadium, it's going to be 62 degrees. And the, the stadium is open. And it's going to be cloudy. I mean, there's not going to be home it runs. It was raining this morning at my Ra- house. Yeah, Game 6 fans, as you know, it's not 100 degrees on Game 6. It's going to be 40 degrees cooler. Okay. The Dodgers need to do what they, the complete opposite of what they did in Game 2 against Verlander. Come Don't out. swing the bat. Yeah, let now, him Now, Corey him Seager pitch. is uh, contractually obligated to swing at the first pitch. Yes, that's part of his contract. That's part we of his contract. That out, yeah. um, we figured that out. But everyone else... He is the best hitter in baseball at swing at the first, first pitch. Do not swing the bat unless you absolutely have to. Yeah. It's And it's infuriating when you're... Except, when you for, wait, up there. except for Logan Forsyth. What was up with him looking at three pitches with two men on on second and third, and he looks at three pitches that, yes, they were... It was They edges. were nowhere near the plate. Well, one of them wasn't. And that kind of like gets you, like when Kike strikes out, and that ball yeah. almost... Oh, Dude, him? Dude, yeah, that, he was like this. I saw a really great uh, montage video that someone posted on Twitter today of all the really awful off-the-plate pitches that were called yeah. for strikes. Yeah. And every pitcher was like, I'm sorry, every hitter was like, really, bro? Really? And then when Logan Forsythe ended up striking out, like no one wants to get thrown out of a game. Yeah, but he did go back but and talk to him. But he turns around and goes, no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> It's just and like Logan. No, sir. Of course, he's called him sir. Yeah. Because he's, so, he's very polite. Logan. In April, I think someone gets thrown out. Now, here's what I do, right? I turn oh, around. In April, someone I turn for around sure is And I thrown. say, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? And I drop all my shit. In and I April. go, are you kidding me right now? In April. No, no. In this World now. Series game. And when he throws me out, I'll refuse to leave. And I'll be like, no, listen. Throwing me out is going to affect the other 24 people. Yeah, okay. So. I will refuse to leave. And then I'll do what that one minor league uh, coach did and like throw fake grenades over the the <laughs> hill and everything. <laughs> okay. So I'll get my money's worth. Yeah. Let's let's I mean what um what about Dave Ro- so you know of course we have to talk about Dave Roberts and look it's easy again it's easy to manage the day after but during the game we were questioning things. Twitter was going crazy pitch by pitch. And so it wasn't even like let's Monday morning quarterback. So okay, so here's it was a, here's let's a series, Monday morning manage. It was series of we're events, managing right? now. Unfortunately, Kershaw only goes four innings, which yes. I need more than four innings out of my thirty million dollar ace. We gotta have six. Now that made us go into the bullpen early again. Okay, that sucks for the but fourth straight game. I was finally in the last two games finally happy with Dave Roberts's lineups because someone kicked him in the nuts like I thought they would and say, listen, play the hitters that can hit. Yes. But then and and, and it showed because we scored twelve and six runs. Yeah. So. We score 18 runs in two games with a legitimate lineup. Yes. Now, you go up out there, you're down by three. No, I'm sorry, sorry. We're up 8-7, and then you have Kike Hernandez up there. You have the, uh, you have Ginger Jesus at second base who has a bad knee, who cannot run. That's yes. why he's your DH, and he's not playing third base. And you have the hottest hitter on your team who's your cleanup Kike. hitter Kike. who never, ever bunts. Yes. Bunt. And he bunts it right back to the pitcher, and, and Turner gets thrown out at and third. And we're making Turner run hard. Yes. He, which he could get hurt more. What the hell were you doing, Dave? Zero Dave, outs. Dave, there were no outs. What were you doing? That call might come now, back to haunt him. fast forward to no outs, runners on second and third, hottest hitter on your team's coming up to bat again, Kike Hernandez. Oh, uh, well, yeah, Kike, let's sit you down, even though you're like 9 for 17. He was playing lefty-righty matchups. With his garbage matchups. And let's bring in Andre Ethier, who's not doing anything. Well, the analytical... Oh, I'm sorry, there was two outs. It was two, two on with two outs, not okay. no outs. But okay. Kike's hitting. Kike is hitting. He's... Let him swing the bat. Okay. You're down by three. You are down by three at this point. But how do we know that Ethier hasn't gone like seven for eight off this guy before? I, I mean, don't care. I don't think he's even been up I against that guy. I don't care. The, huh? the, the, the statistic that people were whining about on Twitter, and guys understand that we like the Silver Fox too, but everyone's like, oh, Chase is like six for seven against this guy. Yeah, those yeah, stats were compiled in 2012. Yeah, great. Yeah, those, that's five those years Those stats ago. were five years ago. Yeah, it doesn't help because no. he's not hitting right now. Right. He's really so struggling. So if I'm down by three and my hottest hitter is up with runners in scoring position, yeah. I'm going up there and saying, Kike, do whatever you got to do. Baby stadium, baby. Get on. Baby stadium. And if anybody's hitting it out of the baby stadium, it's Kike. Right. Instead, yeah. Ethier goes and grounds out. And you're like... It ah. was a sharp grounder. 
The, it I don't was care. a sharp ground. I don't care. He and did, then he goes and replaces Kike in left field. Defensive mistake. Not okay. So you were you were also then then you're alluding to in the final play of the game. Final play of the game. Andre Ethier could who doesn't have, made have an it. arm who does not have an arm and people understand that but Kike doesn't really have that. It much doesn't matter. But there's either. two outs, right? There's two outs, and instinctively everyone was yelling throw the ball home. Yeah. But the runners running from first to third and home to second were not paying attention. The guy from second was hauling ass to get home. Yeah. Andre Ethier throws the ball at who's playing third base, not Justin Turner. Uh, Logan Forsyth. Forsyth. Yeah. You tag the runner out in between second and third. That run never comes home <laughs> because the runner running from second to third wasn't yeah. even paying attention. He was just looking at home, going, "We're gonna win." Well, we're you're you're win. taking the chance that you're gonna beat that tag before the guy makes it home. You're taking that chance. You are, but was I don't Andre think Ethier at it. any point ever going to throw this guy out? I knew it. You knew it. No. Everyone knew that that wasn't going to happen. As soon as the ball was hit, I knew that that, that was a run. So being you scored. get the lead run. You get the guy going from second to third out, but. It's, I don't know, man. It's uh, That one is a tough one because, I mean, I can't even blame Andre in there. The problem is he, he's throwing from the offside of his body in left field because he's a, he should be playing right field. Right. You know, but, I mean, if anything, you, if anything, you have Puig over there because then he doesn't Puig have to turn. Puig makes that third have to. Well, but of course, the ball could have been hit the other way too. Right. So. Again, Monday morning quarterback, armchair GM. Kenley, Listen, there was not a lot of effective pitching going on at all in that on game. On either side. On either side of that game. The only effective pitcher that I saw in the last three days with Al- was Alex Wood, and he may not pitch again in this, season, in this series because we've got, we've got you know, you coming up. We've got Hill and you coming up to these final two games, and if anything, Alex Wood now is coming out of the pen because there is no game eight. Right. So we've got our probably the pitcher that's looked the best in this series, Alex Wood. He really has looked the best. He and Maeda have looked the best total, in total. That adds Wood to the bullpen, which is good because they're number three. Because we form. don't have bullpen arms. Well, nobody does. Houston has less than no, we do. Well, right, but it's like, Dave, Boy fans, it's you- the seventh, eighth inning, and we're out of pitchers. The only two guys in there are Josh Field and, and freaking um, and, Brandon and McCarthy. Brandon McCarthy, yes. What? Well, McCarthy, as we said in the last show, if you didn't see it, why is Brand? And look again, we like Brandon McCarthy, but why is he on this playoff roster? There's no re- he is not a relief pitcher, so there's no reason to have him. And honestly, I don't think Field should have been on it when so, you have Walker so, Bueller who's throwing the ball 100 miles an hour. Is the same thing. And then you got and and look as much as we bagged on Baez, this is but at least that's Baez's job, right? He's it's not he McCarthy's understands job. the situation where he's going to come in again. Pedro Baez lights out with a clean inning. Clean Pedro Baez like isn't the dude that's going to come in in the 12th of a clean inning and give but it back-to-back home runs. Andrew McCarthy's not lights out in any Brandon McCarthy. Inning. I mean, Brandon McCarthy. is not lights out in any inning. No, he's not. So, you know, I, it was, so, it's inexplicable to me. We're short a bullpen arm right now, and it's being taken up by a oh, starting I mean, in 100 Rue, they don't bring him in, and the logic was, oh, because of his shoulder sh- injury, it takes him longer to warm up. Sure. Okay, whatever. Just Great. have him soft toss. We have Baez. Yeah. He's not, and, and Walker Bueller again. This kid's throwing 100 miles an hour, but he's chilling in the stands, hanging then out. Then everybody's gonna go, "Why'd you take a chance on a rookie?" Uh, Jock Peterson, Corey Seager, Cody Ballinger. These guys are all new to the. These playoffs. guys are all new to the playoffs. These guys are all new to the situation. I mean, uh, Cody is a a true rookie. I mean, Seager played in the playoffs last year for a couple of games. Jock no, has no, been but there. None of those players have been to the World Series. But what I'm saying is that these all these kids are kids. They're 20, 21, so 22. Why not? Yeah, and Bueller, we know he's going to be, you know, one of our studs next year. Yeah, anyway. and it's like, dude. It's 1.30 in the morning Gosh, in Houston. Gosh, I wish Houston. we had Julio Arias. 1.30 in the morning in Houston. Get out there. Throw one-on-one on the gun. No one's hitting that. Yeah. Well, they're a fastball hitting team. True. Houston's a fastball hitting true, team. True, but throw something inside. You know that that corner that's towards the umpire's left gets yeah. an additional nine inches? Yeah. Throw something out there. Yes. Force them to try and hit the ball. Exactly. And you know what? I'll tip my hat to you. You hit a home run off this kid at 101 miles an hour. Perfect. Good same, for thing you, bro. They, same thing Good when people were hitting home runs off Chapman. It's like, great. Exactly. You did it. Perfect. So, um, you know, I think that just everybody's – the, the, the pl- okay, so here's the deal. We got to – obviously, we're backs, we against, backs against the wall. We're back home, though, in Los Angeles, which I think bodes well. Um, our field favors this team. Our team is constructed for Dodger Stadium. Even though we're a high-powered offense, our players are doubles hitters. They're maybe home run hitters, but they are really in the gap doubles hitters. How many doubles we have in the gap yesterday? Doubles hitters in the gap. Um, It's going to be cold and chilly out. Rich Hill, if he can get a grip on that slick ball, if his curve ball can curve even a little bit. But, I mean, you know, I'm thinking Verlander, 
they've seen him once. And yes, we struggled for the first four and a half and innings. Brent, um, Justin Verlander is a power pitcher. Yes. He's going to go out there, and if he has to throw 110, 120 pitches, he will. Why are you going to go up there hacking? Make him throw pitches. Make him throw pitches. Him throw Work pitches. the count. What got yeah. us into the playoffs? What got us through the playoffs in a heartbeat? Working the count. Knocking well, we've been out, doing that. Well, knocking I, out their starters. Well, in this game five, which they is did kind of, it against Keiko. They, they did it in game five did. against they worked, Keiko. Well, they worked all. They worked the count. And look, I'm going to give it to the Astros too because they just went up there feeling. Like, I think they were playing looser than the Dodgers. Uh, once they c- tied the game, I think that they felt like this now is our game to lose. Once they tied it. Well, I think the pressure is on Los Angeles, and it always has been, because the Dodgers have been on the cusp for years. Yes, that's Houston true. Houston has not. That's true. The Dodgers have been on the cusp for years. So, and there's a lot of pressure on Kershaw. Um, so, you know, I, I see us, you know, it's going to be, game six is going to be tight. I think it's not going to, and, and I don't think it's going to be a 10-9 to 9 game. This we blow them be, out. This is going to be. You, we you, knocked Justin Berliner out in the second inning. That's what you think. That's I hope your, so. That's, that's your bold prediction. That's None of my predictions so far have been right yet. I said Kenley's no way he's blowing another game in seven days, and he blew another game. He did. Chan- I mean, really, it's a second inning of work. You Listen, don't if really I'm the Dodgers, ask what him. I do, I do what college football teams do. When the balls show up, and I'm like, sorry, NCAA. We have our NCAA sanctioned balls. We'll be using these. Yeah. So like, if this is an official Major League Baseball, we'll be using these because they're not made out of, like, slickness. <laughs> We don't even know. Didn't you get some World Series baseballs? I did. Where are they? How come we can't test them? They're at the, my house. How come we can't test the balls? The, the, you know what? I should. You should have told me. That would have been great. That would have been really good. We have the ball. Wait, is yeah, that the official actually, ball? Yeah, it's the official World so Series I, ball. We, we, but, I mean, we don't have anything to test it against the other balls. Yeah, but, but you can. You picked up a t- baseball before. I picked you, up a lot. They said that you could notice it immediately. Okay, that's not good. Can't you scuff the ball a little bit as a pitcher? You're not supposed rub to. Rub some sand on You're it a little bit. To. Gaylord Perry action. You see, you see the pitchers kind of rub their hands yeah, on it yeah. like this, but you can't scuff it. Oh, it'll be a little scuffing action. It'll be nice. Yeah. All right. Do we even have a gift of the day? No, we don't do gift of the days and shows between the shows. All right. No gift of the day. But Dodger fans, I know you're stressed out. I know you're worried. Uh, many of you. You have... Darvish is going to pitch the game of his life in game seven and win us the World Series. This is what we brought him here for. This is it. And, and look, him going up against their number three, I'm very confident. Right. They're, and they're out of bullets. The, yeah. Houston, besides Voland, Verlander, they are out of bullets. We still have Alex Wood, who I think is going to be able to come in in either one of these two games. So if you don't think you don't think that they're gonna bust uh, an Arizona Diamondback to circa two thousand one with that. Keiko and Verlander, and then all of a sudden their number three pitcher in Game Seven gets knocked out. So then you have Keiko and sure, Verlander. But we but Keiko's not been effective at all in either of the games he's right. pitched. So yeah, bring Keiko on because he is he has lost it. Another he, another, he's another worse thing off that kind of pissed me off about Joe Buck when Keiko leaves, he goes, "Well, they got him out kind of early. He's got a low pitch count. That saves some. Uh, that saves him for Game Seven. Great. Get out of here. Well, at least he was acknowledging there's going to be a Game Seven. Right. Also true. <laughs> All right. What else do we have to talk about for this for this sh- emergency episode of um, Best Coast Show? Okay. So Game Six fans, get out there, cheer your heads off, boo yeah. boo Guriel as much as you possibly can. Um, if you guys want to jump into the uh, bullpen again, feel free to do so. It worked last time. <laughs> it's gonna be. It needs to be loud for all the players. Like it needs to be loud in that stadium. I want. I want the Houston Astros to think there's an earthquake happening. Yeah, it needs to be loud. It needs to be really loud. And and I know sometimes that's trouble for Dodger fans to get loud. You got to look around you to see if there's anybody else getting loud, and then you'll get loud. Right. I know some Dodger fans are like that, but but this, this there's no excuse. This is this is backs against the wall. Game six, must win it, and uh, go Dodgers. Yeah, guys. Uh, but yeah, go out there, check us out on the Instagram, stalk us on the Twitter at Best Coast Show. You can catch the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever podcasts are heard. But that's been our show, and uh, you have a good night.